Hi everyone, welcome back to Liz Sews. Today I have you guys my December makes. I didn't make a ton of things in December, but I thought I'd show you just a couple of things that I've been up to in the meantime. The first is the dress that I'm wearing now. And the dress goes along with this Vogue 8333 jacket that I had made in November. So I really, really liked how this jacket turned out and I had some excess of this um, wool baratha suiting left over. So I made a matching dress to go with it and I used Butterick 6453 and I used View B, which is sort of the slimline version here. I've made this view once before and I've made um, the gathered skirt version two or three times before. It's a good basic pattern. I do like how it has the princess seamed bodice. I think it's a lot easier to fit a princess seam, at least for me. Um, so I just wanted something very slim and sleek and straight line to go with the jacket. I'll try to insert some photos as well, a video of me wearing this dress here. Uh, there's not much to say about it. I, I follow the pattern pretty religiously except for one thing and that is I don't put in adjustable straps. I think the whole reason I'm making clothing myself is to get clothes that fit me perfectly. Uh, so why would I need an adjustable strap? So I just make a, a uh, ruler loop strap and I put it in at the length that I need it for myself and I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, changes to make to this pattern. I, if I ever do make it again, like I said, I've made it a couple of times now, I might lengthen this a little bit just because I want it to hit a little bit below the knee and maybe taper it in just a little bit more so you have um, much more of a pegged silhouette instead of right now it kind of goes straight down from the hips um, but other than that yeah crazy simple pattern I think I made this in an afternoon super super easy to do um, and I think a great addition to my jacket I think it makes a really smart uh, ensemble when I wear the both of them together so the next item that I have to show you and actually the shirt of the pants I'm wearing. So these are yoga pants using Simplicity 8212. This is, I thought I had made these pants already, but I, I guess I'd used a different pattern because um, <laughs> this paper wasn't cut. So I guess the first time I've used this. And I did view, I think it's view A. So mid-rise leggings that are full length. Uh, these do not have any special cutouts or details in them. One thing that I did to alter the pattern is I removed the outer seam of, that runs along the outer side of the pants. So coming from the hip down here. So I cut the leg all in one piece. Uh, that's just something I wanted to try out because the yoga pants that I purchased ready to wear uh, don't have that outer seam. And so I wanted to see if it was something that I could easily take out. I think I did an okay job at it. Um, it is a little bit tight up around the hip and the waist region and I think that's because the way that I did it is I drew a straight line directly from the waist all the way down to the ankle. So I wanted that to be, you know, a very, very straight line and then that's where I overlapped my two front and back pieces along that straight line. So I did lose some of that shaping um, for the hips and I think that's why it's a little bit tight up here. So I have to think about that a little bit more and figure out how to fix that. But overall, I'm fairly pleased with how these pants turned out. They're using, it's a Ponte actually, that I purchased from Joann's Fabrics and the Ponte, it has a lot of elastin in it, so a lot of recovery. It's not something that's typically recommended for, you know, athleisure or yoga pants or something like that, but I thought because of the amount of elastin and recovery, it would work pretty well, and it did. They're super, super warm. I'm very happy with how they turned out, even though I could use a little bit more room in the hips. Um, I think that this is definitely something I might return to again if I find another fabric that just screams to be made into athletic pants. So the next item I have is McCall's 7154 and this is the dress that I think broke me. Uh, after I made this I just had so much trouble with the fabric, with hand sewing, with getting things to fit that I just I gave up. Uh, <laughs> I finished the dress because I needed to tell myself that I finished it but I'm going to call it a wearable muslin. I don't know that I'd ever make this pattern again. 
Uh, I do think it has some interesting details. I do like the cutout details, although of course on this side I didn't do them as well as I probably should have. This is a little longer than it should be. Uh, I think the skirt has a lot of nice style lines in it, but again, I just didn't execute it very well. And uh, I did make one or two two changes to the pattern. The first being I got rid of this blousey overlay. I just cut two of the lining pattern pieces and then, you know, did it like a self-lined bodice. And the reason I did that is the lining has a bust start and then a waist start, so you get a lot more shaping and you don't have any of that blousey effect, which I thought would be a little bit more flattering on me. But we did have trouble resolving that around the, ish, the zipper area. The zipper doesn't look super great. And then I also got rid of the ruching around the hips, though again, I don't think I did a very good job at it because the pieces just didn't fit together quite very well. And then there's some awkward buckling. Um, it just doesn't lay as, as beautifully as I think it should. So uh, I think if I were to make this again, which I'm not saying I would, I would definitely keep the, the bodice um, alteration. I don't know. I might go back and put the ruching back in the hips just because I didn't think I did a particularly good job of drafting them out. So I'll try to insert some photos of the dress worn here so you can see what it looks like. Uh, I used a very, very slinky um, crepe de chine fabric from Minerva Crafts, which they provided to me for free. Uh, so that was one reason why I really felt like I had to finish this dress, because I needed to have shown something for it. Um, again, like there's a lot of interesting style lines and details in this dress. I don't think that I did it justice, and I don't know that I would want to try to make it again because I don't need a gown for anything in particular. So the one item that I made this month that I was actually really, really thrilled with my results are is a purse and a wallet that I made for my mother. So the wallet uses this fennel and cork material that I purchased from So Sweetness, but I think there are other places that sell it as well. Um, and then I used Emmeline hardware, Emmeline bags hardware. So I have this copper thing here. There's some plastic on it just to keep it from scratching before I give it to my mom. And then there's a, a handmade label on the back as well that's in copper. I just have tape over it right now to protect it. I did a magnetic uh, snap closure on here. And then the interior is using all these pretty different boutiques in purple and lime green. My mom loves the combination of purple and lime green. I think it looks pretty cool together and I like how it's just that little flash of interest when you open it up. This is the best necessary clutch wallet I have made so far. So I'm really glad that I, I saved this to the end because I think it did a really good job and I'm very proud of myself with this. The purse that I went to match the bag, I used my leftover cork that I had from that and I used cork on the straps and then I used cork along the bottom of the bag as well. So the bottom of the bag has copper feet and I think that'll help it keep a little bit more durable. I used the same copper hardware to do this little tassel and the tassel's made out of cork. I don't know if my mom will particularly like the tassel but I just thought I'd make it because I had the hardware left over. I had I had purchased this hardware to make for my bag but then I realized I don't have anywhere to attach a tassel to my bag. So I used D-rings and I used just swivel clasps and rivets to make the handles on here. I actually think Emmeline Hardware's, um, like the bag anchors that they sell are really pretty. They're absolutely very hard to put in. I've tried a couple, I've tried the long john, I've tried a couple different types of them and I find them really difficult to put on and I think they're kind of expensive. So I went this route instead and I actually like it better than some of their strap anchor hardware and I think it makes it more versatile as well. So if these straps ever sort of wear out, it would be really easy to just take them off and reuse the hardware and make a different strap like a like a fabric strap or something like that. So the main body of this purse is that same purple batik fabric that you saw in the wallet and then the interior of the purse has the green accents that were in the wallet as well. So there's a green line up along the top of the bag as well as the pockets are green and then it, the rest of the interior is the purple batik. So I'm very happy with how this turned out. Like I said, it's the one project that I made this month that I'm actually proud about and I can't wait to give it to my mom. 
So this month I decided to break from tradition a little bit and I did a tutorial for this cat shirt that Uzi is wearing right here. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing how I made this, I will link the tutorial up above. Somebody's not too happy about being held right now, but uh, this is not his favorite shirt. He actually really likes the first one. We made him better um, because that one uses a wool jersey fabric and he just loves the smell of wool. The last thing that I made in the month of December was just to cross it off of my make nine list. I actually got eight of my nine things done. The only thing I didn't finish was a robe. Um, so I wanted to get this done because I thought it would be a quick and easy project. And that is Simplicity 8510 and I wanted to make the tap pants. I thought that would be a really comfortable thing to wear underneath a skirt, especially one that has, you know, like your natural waistline, not a more modern waistline skirt. Um, and so yeah, I made it in this green, green, uh, red satin fabric just because it's Christmassy. Uh, it's a little bit wrinkly. It's been sitting in my underwear drawer now for a few weeks, but, um, yeah, it was a fast, fast, simple make. I'm not going to show you on because that's a little not what my channel is going to be about. I'm glad I crossed it off of my list. And that is everything that I made in the month of December. Um, I probably will not be putting up a January plans video. I think I need to take a little bit of a break. Uh, my sewing has just not been going super great. I'm not feeling good about myself and my body. And so I think I just need to take a break, do something else for a little bit while, and then come back to sewing and hopefully with a more reinvigorated uh, sojo. So if I don't see you guys in January, I hope you guys have a good start to your new year and I will see you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.